Hey there, Papper people. Grandpa Lanky here, a registered polysomnographic technologist. My name is Jason. Now recently I was doing a pap therapy analysis with a gentleman and he shared some really cool video and audio footage with me of his DICE procedure. If you don't know what that is, it is a drug-induced sleep endoscopy. I wanna be upfront right now, Certainly not my area of specialty. I don't know a lot about it. This is actually the first one I've ever seen. Some of the things that I'll share with you, I just know about like anyone could if you just look it up online. So if you are an ENT and you feel the need to correct me on any of this, please do so in the comment section down below. I would actually really appreciate it. Here's some of the things I do know though. Drug induced sleep endoscopy, they basically sedate you. They put you into a sleep-like state. Then they send an endoscope into your nose, down into your upper airway, all the way down to the epiglottis. They may go farther, I'm not sure. Now the whole point of the dice is to see where is your obstruction coming from. They already know you have sleep apnea. Where is the obstruction coming from? I believe they look at things in the structure of the nose, such as the turbinates. They look to see if you have a deviated septum, down into the uvula causing an obstruction. Is the soft palate causing an obstruction? Is the base of the tongue, jaw, pushing back into your airway, causing an obstruction. Uh, they look at the size of your pharynx. And based on the video, it looks like they even look at the epiglottis. Now I'm gonna show you this video. You can hear what the doctor has to say about it in her own words, but they also sounds like they do a jaw thrust maneuver where they pull the jaw forward to see what happens to the airway when they do that, what happens when it gets pushed back. Now the whole purpose of this is to see is it specifically one location that needs to be addressed or do you have several points of obstruction that need to be addressed or dealt with to be able to sleep successfully without the use of CPAP? In other words, what surgical intervention do you need to have the best possible outcome? Now, I don't really wanna get into the surgeries and what they're good for, what they're not good for. I really just wanna focus on the DICE procedure itself. I definitely have my own opinions on surgeries. We'll leave that for other videos that I've already done. I wanna make one more point before I show you the video and that is, this is a young guy. He was jobless at the time I spoke with him. He's using CPAP, he's taping his mouth. He has a whole apparatus on his head. And his girlfriend's really hot. Now, it's totally unrelated to this video, but I feel it's important to bring up. A lot of people, they really feel like using CPAP is gonna be a deal breaker. So what I'm saying to you, friends, is Maybe you need to up your game. Now, before I show you the video of this DICE procedure, I first need to say a big thank you to the sponsor of this channel, that is CPAPsupplies.com. Do they sell DICE procedures here? No, no, they don't. But if you have a DICE procedure and they say, wow, you have a lot of sources of obstruction, maybe you wanna go ahead and grab a CPAP machine, an APAP machine, a bowel level machine, or an ASV machine, along with a mask. Now, if you get any mask or accessory, you can always use discount code 20 lanky to save 20% off that order. They have a great loyalty rewards program. And I'm gonna work on getting 25 of my top favorite items that they sell, doing a video on that, so you can see exactly what items they have that I highly recommend. So be looking for that in a future video. Anyway, thank you very much, CPAPsupplies.com, for sponsoring this video. Now with the sleep endoscopy, pretty much you are given sedation. I put the camera through your nose and then I took a bird's eye view of what's happening in your airway here, right? Yeah. Um, what I found was that starting at the very top, so starting at your soft palate, mm. okay, McDonald's arch right at the back, I did see a complete collapse happening there, yeah. okay? Yeah. It was in what we call an anterior posterior manner, so back and forth right. manner happened there. And we kind of suspected that from the yeah. recreation we had done in clinic, right? Yeah. So the endoscopy confirms that, that, that there is, and you know, we look at and see if it's partial or complete. Yours was complete. Okay. Yeah. Okay. Now, moving down here, so moving down to the lateral walls. So, lateral walls are pretty much what your top is. Okay. Um, there I saw partial, so not complete. Right. Closure right. happened there. Now, the interesting thing with that is that for you, because every time I'm looking at a site, I would do a jaw thrust, okay. right? I do that to simulate what a double jaw surgery would do, what a mouth guard would do, right? right? So I guess going back to the palate, when I did a jaw thrust, okay, it did, by bringing this one, it did improve the level of the palate, right. the opening right. there. 
But your lateral walls, when I brought your jaw forward, that just seemed to cause your lateral walls right. to come, right? Yeah. Because, yeah. you know, that's not something I typically see. So we kept doing it just to make sure. Right. Yeah. Um, but your lateral walls did not like it. When I brought your jaw forward, right. lateral falls, walls would collapse. And that's where I saw a lot of snoring. Right. Starts with the jaw thrust on, right. okay? Now, moving down to the base of your tongue, okay? Now, remember with your tongue, your tongue is here, but your tongue is actually going down into the airway, yep. connecting to your epiglottis, right? Yep. So, your tongue, complete. Complete collapse that's happening. So, it, you know, it's interesting seeing this because you have a diagnosis of mild sleep apnea. Right. But we're seeing these complete sites. Yeah, that's why I wanted to get the dice because there was something that wasn't being accounted for. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Mm -hmm. So I, I do see the I see complete collapse happening yeah. at the base of your tongue, right? Again, we did the jaw thrust and the jaw thrust did help. It did yeah. help the airway, right? Yeah. At the level of the tongue base. Now yeah. um moving down to your epiglottis yeah. here. Okay, with your epiglottis. We have something called a trapdoor phenomenon, mm -hmm. right? Where the epiglottis can just sometimes just close Back, off. Back, right? right? Yeah. For you, it's not continuous. Okay. It comes. Oh, okay. So it'd be there, and sometimes I see it go down and come back up. Okay. Okay. Um, I did the jaw thrust to see because sometimes when you do the jaw thrust, jaw thrust means that it's the jaw is pulling your tongue, and because your tongue is connected to the epiglottis, it pulls your epiglottis up. Right. 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 Uh, for some patients that works. Some patients it doesn't. For you, it did. Once I did, once I pulled your jaw forward, it pulled your tongue. It pulled the epiglottis. Right. Up. That makes sense. I didn't see the trapdoor. Right. Happen. Yeah. I, I I thought that might be the case too. Mm hmm. Now, I looked at your, I know you were concerned about your vocal cords, so I did take a close look at your vocal cords yeah. while it was happening. I was looking for what we call vocal vocal fold or vocal cord dysfunction, where yeah. it's closed when it shouldn't, opening when it shouldn't. I didn't see that during yeah. the yeah. endoscopy procedure. Yeah. Uh, for me, your vocal cords, I'm just checking here, they opened appropriately and they were moving appropriately, okay. even all of the positionings that right. I did. So in terms of treatment options here, yeah. right? The the issue with the oral appliance is that in the simulation, now this is not a crystal ball, this yeah. is the best way, right? To yeah. see and a glimpse of what's happening when you're sleeping. You know, the oral appliance, the jaw thrust helped with your tongue base, it helped with your epiglottis, it even helped a little bit with your palate, but for some reason your lateral walls did not like it. Yeah. It start sucking in some complex yeah thing yeah so i cannot recommend the oral appliance yeah. don yeah what no, I, I i've tried it before and it didn't work for me um mm -hmm. right now i'm i'm actually really good um like i i'm using cpap therapy i'm at a high pressure i'm okay. using i'm using something called a soft cervical collar and it what it does is it just applies a little bit of pressure to this front cartilage Yes. And that stops the aerophagia, the air going into my stomach. Good, good. And that way I can tolerate the higher pressure of the CPAP. And I'll be mm -hmm. frank, like it's been about 16 days since I figured out this whole routine. Yes. And uh, I feel amazing. I feel really good. Good, I've good. never been like this. And um, I'm really oh, thankful that I got to this point. Yes. Yeah. Okay. Because you look different. I have to say, I don't know if it's because I'm seeing this sunny background behind you. Yeah. But I mean, you do look more yeah. alive, more I, yeah. energized than I when I've seen I think I've, I've actually had like deep or restful sleep in like the 25 years I've been alive. It's only been over the last like couple of weeks. Mm -hmm. And I have a working short term memory. I can organize things and I feel much better. So good. Yeah, good. It's, uh, it's a big night and day difference for me. That's excellent. And yeah. because what I Rishi is that you know I'll tell you the treatment options here yeah before I move there if what you're doing is working that's what I tell all of my patients yeah. stick, stick with stick what with it, yeah is. this is going down a road of more potential more complications and issues new problems right right, right. So I'll give these options but my recommendation is if you have figured out a regimen that works for you and you feel you feel the difference please yeah. stick with it okay hmm. Um, 
So what I have here for you as options are surgery on the palate, okay, and surgery on the tongue base to reduce the volume of your tongue, okay, right. Again, because I don't see that jaw thrust working very well for you. So let's try to reduce the volume of your tongue, right, to open up the space there and working on your palate to, to remove right. that collapse. Right. Yeah. My top option for you, um, MMA surgery is there, but... I still am guarded on that recommendation because the MMA surgery is doing what the oral appliance will do. Right. And my concern is that you bring your jaw out and your lateral walls collapse after, but now you've done a permanent surgery. You yeah. can't go back. Right? Yeah. Um, so I have it there, but very guarded with that recommendation yeah. to really. Okay. All right, y'all, that's all I've got for this video today. I hope you enjoyed it. It was a learning experience for me. Anyway, if you're interested in having a pap therapy analysis with me, check out axgsleepdiagnostics.com. If you have a mask already, you can go ahead and use some Mask Bright. You can get that at Amazon. Your mask is stinky. No one's telling you because they're embarrassed. It's like you have something stuck in your teeth, but like, thanks for watching. If you made it this far and you haven't yet, please like the video, subscribe to the channel. Thank you very much. Bye. Clean your stinky mask with some Mask Bright available at Amazon. Thank you to all watching, but an extra thick <coughs> thanks butter to Doug Toombs, Jason Georgiades, Patricia Espalong, Sarvesh Joshi, Stuart Hetherington, Mona Swaringen, Chung Tu Chen, Edward Steiner, and Shannon Kerr, and another slightly less thick thanks buddy to all the other YouTube members, Patreon supporters, and other stuff.